Hey Brick Maniacs, it is Lando here and I'm at the designer's desk of Daniel Siskind with his all new BT-5 Russian tank. Um, let's start off like we always do with the history, how about that? A little bit of history? Well, yeah. the, the BT-5, this is a, a Russian, the whole BT series, it basically means fast tank, um, the abbreviation. Um, these are Russian copies of the Christie tank. So, um, Christie was an American who invented this tank and this has pretty revolutionary suspension. Uh, the, the big road wheels, uh, independently sprung road wheels, um, and they could actually take the tracks off and drive the thing on the road. So they call it the fast tank for a reason. They can actually drive it. The front wheels actually steer, if you can believe it. Oh, wow. Um, but when it's in tank mode, you have the tracks on it, it, it operates like a normal tank for going over, over ground. Um, these things were considered like the fastest, you know, they, they were meant to be fast. They're cavalry tanks. You can see pictures of these things that they're actually launching them in the air over ramps and stuff. <laughs> so they, you can jump, you can jump other tanks with your, your BT tank. Yes. It's, it's well documented. <laughs> I knew it was possible. Well documented. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty awesome when your vehicle can, like, has a tank mode. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the ultimate redneck vehicle. <laughs> you know, yes. think about it like, Crazy Russian rednecks driving these things around the, the, the tunnel. Taking them off jumps. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Wouldn't you? If you, you yeah, know, if, if I was a Russian redneck, that's where I'd be. <laughs> I'd want my BT tank. Uh, <laughs> so we have seen this model before uh, in a different color variant, correct? Well, similar. similar. So we did a BT-7. This is the BT-5. Oh, right. Um, so very, sorry. actually, they're, they're really similar tanks. They look almost identical. The difference between the BT-5 and the BT-7 is mainly finishing. Sure. The BT-5 was more of a rush job. It was riveted armor. It was all. It wasn't. It wasn't very refined. And they sent it back to the drawing board. Say, hey, make our tanks better because uh, when somebody throws a Molotov cocktail on the tank, all of the gasoline will burn down through the cracks of uh -oh. the poorly constructed BT-5. So BT-7 was a little bit better. There we go. Uh, yeah, I'll put together a little better. So we've done the BT-7. Um, part of the Barbarossa book that mm -hmm. we did uh, several years back. And we've never done any other BT series. Right. Um, there is a real uh, ev tank evolution. Starts out with the BT series, BT2, BT3, BT5, right. 7, and then right, jumps right to the, the T34. There is a real fam strong family resemblance. Cool. The big road wheels, um, all that, so. Yeah, uh, you were saying that this predates the World War II, it actually. Uh... Yeah, they had, they had thousands of these. At the yeah. beginning of World War II, it was amongst uh, Russia's most produced tanks. Russia is a huge country. They built uh, a huge volume of tanks to defend their country, um, to you know, defend the revolution, basically. Um, the BT-5, BT series was, was among them. The other would be the T-26 light tank. Um, they didn't really have the heavy industry capable of making the real large numbers of heavy tanks at, at, at the, you know, right before World War II. Right. So, um, one thing that we should put us in reference is that 80 years ago um, was the Battle of Colk and Gold, which yeah. is, uh, of course, J forces of Japan and the forces of Russia duking it out over a piece of land on the Mongolian uh, um, uh, frontier. Right. Um, so this would be this would be right, you know, in that in that thing. Yeah, you have some more models here. Right, and also this is this is Japanese. This is a Japanese light tank, which is actually from the Pacific Bricks. Uh -huh. So these would be this would be actually in the Battle of Colk and Gold. These two tanks would have faced off. Very cool. So That's cool seeing a side by side comparison. Right, right. This, this Japanese. being a Japanese, this is a, I believe, a Type 89 type light tank. Um, it's been a while since we, we, we worked in that, but the new. Pacific Bricks book is coming out. Uh, and that's going to be in there? This will be in there, cool. so stay tuned for that. A nice little teaser there, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's cool seeing them side by side, though. So, so. Yeah, awesome. Um, any other history? That's pretty much it. These were replaced, a lot of these were destroyed. Uh, they made, Like I said, they made, I believe, tens of thousands of these. Uh, a lot of them were destroyed in the opening days of the Blitzkrieg, okay. the Operation Barbarossa. Those that were on the um, um, Western frontier of Russia facing Europe were pretty much overwhelmed uh, by the German forces, not because the, the, the Russians lacked training, but they just weren't prepared. Right. They, they, these things were all parked in their, in their depots and easy targets for Russian or German dive bombers yeah. to take care of. So, uh, not for the lack of trying, these things actually did uh, a, a terrific job in World War II, doing their purpose of being a light tank. Um, fairly expendable, you know, think about it, you, you have this fast light tank, and your, your object is really to get uh, a piece of artillery, get guns on, on, a, on a piece of land, and that's what these things were right. designed to do. Uh, they weren't necessarily uh, designed to withstand, you know, lots of artillery uh, or bigger tanks for that right. matter. And I mean, you can build one of or a few of these uh, at a fraction of the cost compared right. to some of their German th armor that they would have faced. Yeah, and I, and I think the idea of these was, you know, off, obviously the, the steps of Russia are vast, and you want to get get your cavalry on, on the scene uh, in a rapid location. Um, but there are suggestions. History would suggest that uh, uh, Stalin had his eye on Western Europe. He, he 
even before World War II started. Right. He was planning to uh, make these fast tanks that they could get all the way across Europe really quickly in case uh, another French-German conflict happened. Hey, let's let's attack the West while they're weak and fighting each other. There you go. <laughs> well, hence you'd need a fast tank for that. Yep. Um, and it would it's narrow. It'd go down those 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 old old you know small roads, narrow roads in Europe very easily. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, wow, that's I mean that's a. It's, it's always cool hearing the, the early World War II, uh, pre-World War II history sure. kind of building up to, you know, one of the most notable conflicts. So yep. that's, this is a, obviously a pivotal um, piece of armor in that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the most important ones. Yeah, cool. For sure. um, so you're saying it's similar in a lot of designs to the BT-7. BT-7, almost in all, all regards. Yeah, especially um, um, how much uh, updates did you do for this model compared to well, the Well, making version? it dark green was, yes, was a real obviously challenge. Obviously, yeah, dark, dark green. Dark green. So uh, when Sam did his uh, gas, mm -hmm. his little light truck, he's like, well, I have to do, I have to, you know, he didn't dark green. It that like, perfectly. And I was like, yeah, that, I, need, I need to switch. So um, it's not easy. There's not right. a lot of dark green parts out there. It does make this kit a little bit more expensive than a normal Brick Mania kit sure. of this size. Uh, and I apologize for that, but I think the, the trade-off is fair that you do get a, uh, an overall dark green, which is uh, significantly, you know, pops pops a lot better. Looks very nice, yeah. Yeah. So there's a significant improvement on, on the color. Uh, the only drawback is because it's dark green, some of these parts are very rare. Right. And we will not be able to make too many more of these. We have one batch of 50 coming out now. And I believe we have enough pieces uh, of, of the most rare pieces to make another batch should these sell out right away. Sure. Um, we'll, we'll be able to make it, but it's definitely not a long term. Uh, unless something changes, some, some sets come out that, that have these parts right. in it. And this is interesting that, um, I guess, this wouldn't even have been possible a few years back, just given the parts library that was available on BrickLink. So yeah, this it's it's growing. It's grow I mean, it, it would have been possible, but it would have there would there would have been Price differences, way, yeah. and some of the things would just be yeah outrageous. Right. Um, so I I was lucky to be able to get just about everything I needed in the right color. Some design changes had to happen. So it's it's uh, cool that we're seeing some uh, quantities on BrickLink. Right. Enough to make a you know batch or two of fifty. So yeah, that's fifty. We we do have this. This does do some stickers on it. We have yeah. obviously the red stars, which are optional. You, you see them more often than not without any marking. That really pops just, too, but yeah. Sometimes just unit markings. There's a little hatch on the back here, and of course we did have to do all the wheels to get them green, otherwise they, yeah. they're, they're black discs. I thought this, that was one of the uh, better applications of uh, these stickers on the wheels there. That, that really simulates the, uh, I guess, kind of rubber wheel. Yeah, it is a rubber it. road wheel. Yeah. And they, they can actually, this tank, they can take those tracks off and, and cruise across. It's one of the reasons that there's this flat fender on here. Yeah. Is that they'll take the tracks off, stow them on the fender, and be able to drive the tank on the roads. That's cool. Um, you, you have much better uh, road speed, get you know much more control on the roads with rubber tires. Wow, yeah. And it, it does save the drivers a lot of vibration. Yeah. It save, saves them from being subject to do yeah. uh, brutal vibrations. Wow, very interesting tank. And again, let's check out that front sloping. There's a really interesting build technique. Yeah, that's the, f the fenders, the way that yeah. they have the fender. The, the, the point, the front of the, the nose of the tank itself actually comes to a, a bit of a point. Sure. So they fill it in uh, with, with big sweeping fenders. Yeah. So it is pretty characteristic of the BT series. Um, of course, they changed that on the, uh, the uh, T 334 with the actual just straight across. Right. Uh, yeah, you were saying this uh, this tank obviously it's part of this BT series, uh, but even a, a greater kind of Soviet Russian lineage of tanks. Uh, where does this fit in on that? Uh, well, this is this is early development. A lot of a, a lot of features that would be on this tank, they continued through. I mean, like uh, all the way to, to modern day, like the T seventy two. Yeah. Um, it is basically a fast tank, the light fast tank. Um, it's not a super heavy tank. It's right. they'd still consider it a main battle tank, but by Western standards, it's puny. Yeah. Uh, they did the same thing here. They, they basically just just kept this whole idea going. Very cool. So, oh, oh the, on this one. The modern equivalent, yes. This this is a T sixty four. So actually, not really quite the modern equivalent. This is a uh, this Cold War tank. This is this is the pinnacle of a uh, of a uh, Soviet Soviet armor yeah. right here. But we'll we'll save that for another video. Cool. It's something that I'm working on. You're showing off all these cool teasing models. teasing yeah, things. Cool. Yes, but this is we're here. We're the BT five. Yes. This, this is it. Split hatches. You can fit your commander yeah. and your loader in there. Actually, I think in this case the commander is the loader. <laughs> so, uh, anything else? No, Move that's over? it. That's cool. There, there really isn't much features. Yeah. It has a it has a gun, a turny thing, a shooty thing, <laughs> a uh, turny shooty. Thing. Turny, yeah. Um, a tur this thing on the back is not a fuel tank. It's actually a giant muffler. Oh, a giant muffler. Yeah. Look at that. So I would have guessed a fuel tank. I, I would. I, that's what I thought it was too. And then I I, I did some more research. Cool. And discovered giant that. Giant muffler. Yeah. So it's quiet. 
Well, yeah, you want Does it meet emission standards for the time? Is that what it is? I think it's maybe so you could go fast and not yeah. scare the horses. Yeah. <laughs> you sneak up on the enemy. I don't know. Right. <laughs> cool. Uh, that is the all new BT5 designed by Dan Siskin. Very awesome model uh, in this really cool color here. So, yep. um, get them while you can. Yeah, get them while you can. I don't know if we'll be able to make a whole big quantity like we do with some of our other kits. but It's uh, not going to be around long. Yeah. We'll, we'll have one batch for sure, probably a second, but beyond that, it, it looks unlikely. Yeah. So, Get it while you can. Uh, with that, that's the episode. Uh, for more information, please check out BrickMania.com. Thanks for watching.